Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and today I'm going to show you a very fun fold in a card that I've created for you. It, the fold is called the Mini Miura and it's like an origami-ish kind of thing, I guess. But uh, I found the idea, the inspiration for it on a YouTube channel called Fold Factory. Um, this gal on Fold Factory shares a card each week and one of them had this really, really fun fold to it. I'm going to bring you down to my camera so that you can or my table so that you can see this was the fold that she shared um it had different dimensions and stuff and she didn't give d dimensions but i i kind of came up with the fold and figured out how to do it um but i simplified it a bit to work with people who are <laughs> into paper crafting for cards and relaxation and not for the stress of doing a really elaborate fold like that so I'm going to actually create a card using that fold. And the supplies that we will need are right here on this little camera. Let's, there we go. Those are the supplies that we're gonna be using for the project I'm gonna to share today. And you can see one of them is a free SAB pick. That stands for Celebration. Um, Stampin' Up! has a time of year, January through March, where every $50 you spend, you get a free Celebration pick from the catalog. And this pack of designer paper, it's 12 sheets of double-sided designer paper with beautiful butterflies on it is one of the free picks. How awesome is that? <laughs> so these are the uh, supplies that you'll need for things that need measurements, the Whisper White cardstock, and you start with a 12 by 12 piece to get that 12 inch length here, and then the Botanical Butterfly designer paper. We're gonna be using scraps of it for um, punching out butterflies that coordinate with one of our new punches called the Butterfly Duet Punch. And then we'll also use a couple pieces vertically placed on the card. And there is um, kind of a direction to a lot of the designs in that pattern. So you want to think directionally when you cut your own. The Amazing Life stamp set is the one that I'll be demonstrating, but I have samples using some other stamp sets. So I'll share those with you in just a second. And then we'll be using the ink, um, Tuxedo Black Memento ink, and a bunch of these tools here. We have the trimmer, the bone folder, paper snips, um, ruler, and a sharp pencil. Those would just be on your own. We don't have those in the online store, but everybody has those, I hope. Snail adhesive, glue dots, take your pick tool. And this is an optional tool. I'll show you a couple different ways that you can do some scoring. And this is one way that's a little bit easier for some. Um, then the accents are the Gingham Gala adhesive back sequence. These are new, uh, along with Amazing Life um, and Butterfly Duet. Uh, products too. These are new in our occasions catalog. And then um, you could also or instead use rhinestones. So let's start out by looking at some of the products. This is the stamp set that I'll be using. So happy to have you in my life is the image that I'll be using and it's a big one. So I'm going to give you a trick for using a big image on your card. Or you could also use, these would be great with the butterfly um, paper, the Beauty of Bounds or the Butterfly Gala. These are also new stamp sets that are in the Occasions catalog. Fun images. And then these are half sheets of the 12 by 12, um, so you can get them into the camera, right? So these are six of the designs. You get two sheets of everything. On the flip side of all your sheets, you also have black and white images as well. So that makes for fun coloring in or just kind of a monochromatic look to your card if you wanted to add one color and then you could use the black and white as kind of a background image or something. So fun papers, are we ready? So let's first start by punching out some of our butterflies. And you'll notice if you go ahead and punch directly into your designer paper scrap, you're going to ruin a butterfly in front of it because the punch actually has both the small and the large butterfly on there. So here is a tip I have for you. If you trim between your butterflies and then you grab a post-it note and you adhere your butterfly to the sticky end of your post-it note, you can then use that to hold onto your scrap of paper while you position it in your punch and punch out your butterflies. And then all you have to do is worry about getting the backing off. <laughs> all right, then we can do that with the small butterflies as well. Again, there are um, designer papers where you can punch them directly out. Let me share those with you really quickly. There's actually two sheets of both. So here are the, the large colorful ones right here. And then on the back side of this green one, we have also butterflies that match that large butterfly. This sheet has the small butterflies that coordinate with the punch. And on the back side of the purple one, 
we have those small black and white butterflies that also work with the small butterfly punch. So for one card, I recommend punching out two large butterflies and then two small ones, but you can change it up however you want. So now what we wanna do is take um, two of our sheets of designer paper from our pack, and I think I'm gonna grab these two, and we wanna cut vertically, which means we want our tall direction. We don't want it to be going this way for our, our height. Our, our piece is going to be three and three quarter inches by five and an eighth inch. And mathematically, it just works. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. You can cut them both together, actually. Why don't we cut one at a time? Um, five and a half is gonna be the height, and then, I'm sorry, five and an eighth, and then three and three quarters is going to be the width. And actually, I think I like this side better, so we'll just do this. Three and three quarter inches. Yeah, I like those butterflies better. <laughs> All right, so we have a piece that is vertical, um, the butterflies are not going sideways. Does that make sense when I say vertical? Let's do the same thing for this one. This paper doesn't have as much of a direction, but it still has a slight, um, you can still tell that there's an up and down to it. So five and an eighth by three and three quarter. Okay, and I'm looking at these measurements right here when I do that. So there are our two pieces. Now for these pieces, we're gonna cut them next, and we're actually gonna cut a little triangle off the corner. To do that, you're going to um, first take your sharp pencil and your ruler, and we're going to mark a little spot along the right long edge. And that mark is gonna be one and seven eighths inches down. The math is very important for this, by the way. You can't be off on it too much or it might screw up your card. So I'm gonna, I turned it this way. I'm turning it this way because it's easier for me to measure this way. So here's my ruler. I've got my one and seven eighths inch mark right there. Let's zoom in so you can see that really quick. So here's one and seven eighths. And my edge of my paper or my top of my paper is there and I'm going to mark right here where the zero spot is, right along the side, okay? So now I've measured one and seven eighths inches down. If that confuses you, you could totally do it this way instead, but I think I thought it was easier to see the actual um, measurements in the paper if I had them. It's a clear ruler. Okay, <laughs> now a little trick that I'm gonna give you, zooming back out here, I'm gonna show you the finished card and then you'll see why I'm doing this trick. So get ready. Normally I don't show the finished card until the end, but this is the finished card and it has a little belly band on it to hold it shut. So we just slide that off and on the inside, when we open it up, you can see how our papers are displayed on there. So here are the triangles that we're gonna be trimming off of our designer paper pieces. Do you see how this piece here is vertically going you know, up, upward like this, but the triangle's on the bottom? And this one, the triangle is on the top. So I'm gonna show you a little trick for cutting both your designer papers at the same time. Move this off to the side for a minute, so here. This is where I wanna cut the triangle because I've already marked it. On this one, the triangle is gonna come off down here, so I'm gonna flip this over. So now that paper is upside down and I can cut them both at the same time. Let's bring in the trimmer. We're gonna line up that mark that I made on my paper with the channel where, you know, where, your, where your trimming blade goes in your trimmer with that channel and it's gonna line up with the little mark at the top, the little corner at the top of the paper. Let me zoom in so you can see that. So here is my mark, and there's the corner, and they're both in that channel. And we're going to slice upward because we want to go against the flat edge of the paper. If you're going against the corner of the paper, you're going to probably cause a little bit of um, uh, bumping and, and bending on that corner. So cut against the flat edge. Now this piece here, when separated from this, is gonna be a lot taller, and we want it to fit in our space correctly, which is why we cut it to five and an eighth instead of um, five and a quarter. We have to remove a little bit of this. So we're gonna cut off just a portion of this edge up here, the longest edge on your triangle. And to do that, and I hope I don't confuse you, that's why I'm doing this on video. <laughs> to do that, I find, it's easiest. Now, if you're a paper cutter that goes down here, you can do it this way. 
but it's easiest to use the measurement along this side, which is on our Stampin' Up! trimmer, it's the first line that you see after the dark gray. So you could do it like this and slice it, or because I use the top of my trimmer, <laughs> don't get confused, I'm just gonna flip it so that my other flat edge is right against the top of my trimmer, and now I can go ahead and slice. And again, don't slice into um, this this direction first because it might it might make this kind of bunch up on you. So start from the top and slice down, which means you really got to hold your paper firm in there so it doesn't move on you. Okay, so we can take that quarter inch away and now we have the gap that we naturally needed between those pieces. Let's set those aside with our punched out butterflies and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare our Whisper White cardstock. So for our Whisper White cardstock that starts out as 12 by 12, we're going to first trim off our belly band and you can get two cards from one sheet of 12 by 12. So we're bringing it to the half inch mark and again I'm using this side of my trimmer and we're going to just slice. So we have a half by a 12 inches right now. We want to have one half inch by 11 inches so we're just going to trim off an extra inch there in a minute and because you can get two from one sheet we're going to trim off one more half inch okay so let's go ahead and prepare our card base we have two cards that we can get from this and our cards open up as you saw here to 12 inches tall and this direction is 11 inches now right most of our cards we make um, fit into these medium size envelopes. Stampin' Up! people love to make medium size cards. Basically, it's, a, it's a, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock cut in half and folded in half. And it fits perfectly into this size envelope. So when we have that eight and a half by 11 piece, 11 is one of those inches. That is the longer length, right? So half of 11, is actually five and a half inches. This is gonna be five and a half and this is gonna be five and a half. That's how we get the two cards out of here. Five and a half plus five and a half is 11. That's this distance and this is 12 all the way over this way. So <laughs> don't con get confused. We need to do some score lines and I want you to be able to do two cards at once. So we're gonna turn it a quarter turn and now we're gonna do our score lines first before cutting our two cards into two pieces. If this gets confusing, just slice your paper in half that way so that it is 12 inches by five and a half and then you can do your scores afterwards. But I'm gonna show you a trick so you can do two cards at once. Here we go, scoring blade, score at four inches on one end, flip it over, score at four inches on the other end. Now we can take and slice those in half at the five and a half inch mark. Okay, make sure it's all straight. There we go. We have two cards. We have a belly band for each and we definitely have plenty of that designer paper because I can't stop getting it every time I order <laughs> more supplies from Stampin' Up. I, that's one of the first things I pick for my freebies. Love the free paper. So I'm bringing this card back in to show you that we need to now make our marks for where we're gonna start our fold lines that go this way on our paper. We've already created these two score lines, now we need to create two more score lines so that we can get that fold. So to do that, I put my paper vertically on my desk in front of me, and I grab my ruler, and now we're gonna go two inches exactly. We're not gonna go one and seven eighths anymore, that was our first measurement. This is gonna be two inches. So from this edge to there, I'm gonna mark on the top score line, and from this edge to here, I'm gonna mark on the second, the bottom score line. So two inches in from the left, two inches in from the right. Now, one more thing that's gonna help is if we also mark the end of these two score lines. So the left side of this top score line and the right side of that bottom score line. This is where you have that optional piercing mat um, for scoring. Let me show you. So my preferred method of scoring is gonna be using this scoring blade on my trimmer and I'm gonna demonstrate that for you. But first let me show you another way of doing it 
in case the scoring blade way frustrates you. So you can take your ruler or a straight edge and you can connect this point to the bottom corner. So here, here are my two points again and my pencil marks off to the sides. And I'm gonna grab this point and connect it down here to this bottom left corner. So from here to there. And I've got a piercing mat under me because that creates a cushion and I can see visually where I'm starting and where I'm stopping my score line, okay? You can press a little bit, it's kind of, kind of hard to see it, and I don't wanna fold it yet, and you'll know why in a, in a minute, but um, I did this score line right here, okay? The, um, the piercing mat, the, the issue with that is that you can press a little too hard and then you can puncture your cardstock. So here is another way, and especially if you don't have a piercing mat and you just have your trimmer, this is the other way of doing it. So you can take your score line, and now we've already created that one, we don't have to do that one again, but we're gonna connect this point, oopsie, there we go, stay on camera, this point again with this mark over here, and that's why I had you mark it on your, on your paper where the score line is, because when you put this down and you're looking at the paper, it kind of gets lost. Um, the end of that score line here kind of gets lost unless you mark it with a pencil. Let's see if zooming in actually can, well, you can see the pencil mark down here, which is good. Um, but this one up here is a little bit harder to see, but I can see it better now that I've marked it with a pencil. So now I want to take my scoring blade and make sure that these two points are centered in my channel. And I'm gonna start right on top of it or close to on top of it. And that's the trouble with doing it this way is it's a little bit harder to see exactly where your, um, your starting point is, but there's a little no uh, like a little knob on the back side here. Um, it's not a blade, it's like a little metal knob and it helps to push into your paper. So we're just gonna push down and push away. So we're scoring that. And I, I like it because I feel like I can get a firmer, firmer score line too than the one that I did down here. Now we wanna take this point and connect it to this little area here. Let me zoom out. There we go. So this point and connect it down here and this point and connect it up here. Now before you actually start folding and creasing these, these score lines, we're gonna do some stamping and I'm gonna show you my, uh, my mistake card. So this is one that I almost finished. I had um, done all the folds, stuck everything on, and then I went to go put that super huge stamp in the middle. But because I had these fold lines in here and I wasn't keeping this completely flat, it was really hard to get that to stamp down. If you're gonna if you're gonna stamp after folding, make sure that you've flattened your paper and you hold it down with something. But we're gonna go ahead and we have our card ready to go. We can see where our middle part of our card is. We want to stay within those two score lines and within these two score lines, and then we can stamp. And after stamping, just go in and erase all those pencil lines. Now we can go ahead and crease. So this fold here is gonna go back, or the corner piece here, this little section, is gonna fold backwards. So you're just gonna come in along here and crease with your hands like that. And then you're gonna crease this one with your hands this way. The ones down here are gonna fold the opposite way. So you're gonna fold them towards you this little section comes towards you. And then these pieces, this is gonna fold this way and that's gonna fold the opposite way. So you're actually gonna have two different directions for your, um, for your straight line folds here. They're gonna go two different directions. But once you have the diagonal ones done in there, then you can start to get your card going into the right place. Grab your bone folder and this is where you're gonna do your extra emphasis on your creases. So you can come in here and you can make sure that they're really folded well. So now it's time to embellish, decorate our card up. Let's take our designer paper. I want to show you a trick with this. So we're going to take two pieces. We're going to put them together side by side and you're going to use your snail to run the adhesive along the back side of both pieces at the same time. And that way when you've got your adhesive on there, it's reaching 
the corners of, you can see that there maybe, it's reaching the corners of those small little triangular um, sections there. So. so that one's ready to go on. Just wanna make sure that you have adhesive as close to the edge on all these pieces as possible. I recommend making sure it's going all the way around, okay? So next we can take our card base and start by just adding this one centered as well as possible in this little section and this piece here centered in this section. I've added the other designer paper and now it's time to add our butterflies. So we're gonna use our glue dots and you only need one glue dot really per butterfly. So you're just gonna take one of your butterflies and stick a glue dot in the middle so that you can pop the wings up if you want to. And that will go in a place where when you fold the card, I'm looking off to the side at my other one, when you fold the card, it's not gonna get bent and scrunched in there, but it can also come off the top and off the bottom of our card. So this one, I'm gonna put the glue dot closer to the head of the body of the butterfly, and that one's gonna go right in here. And let's add a couple little tiny butterflies. Let's add our purple one. Again, putting the glue dot in the middle of the body allows you to do some folding of the wings if you want to. Now, did you notice I put it off on that corner there, but that's okay because when it gets tucked up and in, it's not gonna get bent up. So you'll wanna just kind of play around with your corners um, as you, or with your folding as you add your butterflies on there. And then we can decorate with um, our Gingham Gala adhesive back se sequins. These are new, um, very fun, and they coordinate with the colors of this paper pretty darn well. So I'm gonna take, actually I, I really enjoyed using my take your pick tool to grab up my embellishments. So I'm gonna screw off the end here, which had the stylus tool, and I'm gonna add the spatula slash little piercing tool thing there. And then when I pick them up, they just, they just stick right to it. It's awesome. And I can point exactly where I want to go. I stick one there. And I think I'm gonna do one of these pinkish ones down here. And a purple one up in the corner here. So, there we go. Very fun, right? So the last thing is to add our belly band and that helps to keep our card shut. So you're gonna take your now cut down to half inch by 11 inch card stock. I just trimmed off an inch of that. We're gonna take and close our card and then we're going to wrap from the front, off to the right, across the back, coming up from the left and like this. And it's okay if it goes a little beyond because we're gonna trim that up anyways. We can take and connect the pieces together here as long as it's nice and firm. And so you're just gonna run a little snail along there. And then we can connect them together like that. Then with the end, just hold it up and away and cut from the edge to the middle diagonally and then cut from the other side to the middle diagonally and you've got your fun little um, banner end there. You can even curve it out a little bit if you want to grab your bone folder. You can lift it up and curve it. That way it sticks up and away a little bit, gives it a shadow. And then of course you can add your sequins along there. So let me show you some other samples that I have done. You saw the one originally. I actually had five butterflies on this one. Sorry about that. <laughs> and that, um, so happy to have you in my life is such a nice um, sentiment. Oh, I, before I take this one off, look at that. So instead of putting sequins on the belly band, I just added a punched butterfly. That's kind of a fun way to do it, especially if you have this pattern paper. So I'm showing you other samples that I did with the same designer paper, but with different patterns. So when you open this one up, I'm using a stamp set from the, let me grab those. This one comes from the Butterfly Gala stamp set. So thank you very much. Did the same sort of thing, just have a different sentiment and different pattern papers. This one has um, a little 
uh, adhesive back sequin floral piece on the outside of the banner. So you can do your belly bands however you wish. And same colors, but this time I took the corners and I flipped them to get the black and white side showing, which means I had to stick them into the um, middle of the card instead. So the butterflies went off to the sides. Then on this one here, oh, I added rhinestones. Instead of just sequins, this time I put um, sequins and rhinestones in there. Um, two other designs and the stamp set that I used for this one is the Beauty Abound stamp set. And you can see this one was done a little bit differently too in that I flipped this piece over because this was so pinkish, it's actually um, uh, our coral color. That um, color was so bold over here that I wanted to bring it over here so that's how I stamped the second sentiment off to the side. So I flipped this one over so that it wouldn't get lost. Um, so it was on the black and white instead. And then on this one, I used lots of rhinestones because I am a rhinestone girl. I love rhinestones. So again, same type of idea, only um, I didn't put the sentiment over here. Instead, I put some punched out black and white little butterflies because you can use those other sheets to punch those out. So I have colored ones over here going into the black and white. And this corner, when flipped over, gives you the diagonal black and white stripe. And that sentiment comes from this one here, Amazing Life, down there. So one more. So if you want your, your paper to really shine using a dark cardstock, like even a black, this is our, um, our gray. I think it's... <laughs> Basic gray? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I took and put the papers on a, a card base that was basic gray. Using another celebration item, this is um, one of our five colors that you get in a package of ribbon, our organdy ribbon. Oh my gosh, that's another one of my favorite free celebration items. So you could do a ribbon instead of a belly band. And there we have the inside of that card. So the butterflies and the sequins really pop uh, against the gray for that. So, and the happy birthday comes from Amazing Life again. So, lots of fun and lots of different looks there. I will have photographs of these, so make sure that you visit my blog and the information for that is in my, um, is in the descriptions of the video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed doing this and watching this. Um, now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.